Hey everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to show you how you can create this kinetic type animation in Adobe After Effects. So without further ado, let's just start. Alright so here we are inside of Adobe After Effects and now let's begin. So I'm going to click on new composition to set up a composition and I'm going to call it the text basic and the width and height is set on 9020 by 9020. The frame rate is set on 24 frames per second. And of course, the duration is on 10 seconds. So now this is okay. All right, so I'm gonna go towards the type tool and I'm gonna write the word heat. Let's align that to the middle. And uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna create a stretch text animation for the heat letter. But before we do that, I'm going to press Ctrl plus R to bring the ruler and I'm going to set some guides and then I'm going to turn the text into shapes. I'm going to delete the text layer and then I'm going to use the crazy shapes to set some path keyframes and then I'm going to go towards 1 second and 12 frames and then I'm going to go towards the selection tool. I'm going to select the points. Oops. Let's make sure that we are only going to select the down part of the edge letter and then I'm gonna stretch it like this. Now same as the upper parts and now same as the down for the A letter. However, let's just adjust this tiny triangle to here and the upper one I'm gonna snap it to here and then on the T I'm gonna do something like this and the upper part I'm gonna do something like this so we will have this animation and as you see it is too linear so I'm just gonna copy and paste the first set of keyframes to get a loop and I'm gonna set the easings on 85% so we will have an animation like this great now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to pre-compose this text and I'm going to call it the text animation. And now it is time to add a warp effect to make this text even better. So to do that what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add a wave warp effect and I'm going to set the duration to zero and then I'm going to increase the wave width to numbers such as 250. So we will have something like this when it stretches, that is nice. However, I don't want to have any animation when the letter is at its original position. So I'm just going to set the wave height to zero and I'm going to set a keyframe. And again, when it stretches, which is around uh, one second and 12 frames, I'm going to stretch it for like 20 and then I'm going to bring it back to its original position and it is for the best we use the same easings so I'm going to set the easings on 85% all right that is great now let's change its color by adding a tint effect and I'm going to set the uh, color to a reddish color that is nice and then I'm going to duplicate this text and I'm going to uh, let's call it top one and I'm gonna call it the bottom one. And I'm gonna give it a bit more depth by uh, pushing it. Uh, let's first change its color so we can see better. And I'm gonna push it towards the right side. Let's set it on 1000. So we will have something like this, which is exactly what we want. All right, now off to the next step, which is the displacement design. But before I get to the displacement design, if you have enjoyed this video so far, please don't forget to leave out a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot to grow my channel and produce more videos. Thank you. So let's continue. Now I'm going to pre-compose these two texts and I'm going to call it text warp. Great. And now let's start with the displacement. I'm going to create a new solid. I'm going to call it displacement. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to add a gradient map effect. I'm going to set the dark color to the left side and the bright colors to white and to the right side and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna add a tritone effect and then I'm gonna get the um, I'm gonna set the highlights to black and the midtones to white however we need to sort of kind of combine these two colors together so we can add a 
uh, fastbox blur effect and we can blur it for like um, 130 pixels and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna add the fractal noise effect and I'm gonna change the fractal type to subscale and I'm gonna change the noise type to spline and then what we can do is that we can open the transform property and then we can turn off the uniform scaling and we can adjust the scale I'm gonna set the uh, scale width to 60 and we can increase it to like 150 however we need to reveal these three effects that we made so we can uh, set the mode on overlay so that is great and let's also increase the contrast a bit nice now what I can do is that I can animate the evolution so let's open the evolution which is in here and on three seconds where our animation finishes I can rotate it for two entire rotation so now we'll have this displacement that is nice now let's add the time displacement effect and then I can set the time displacement layer to displacement map and then I can change the source to effects and mask and then I'm going to set it on 0.4 and the time resolution to 250. Now, since the time res time displacement effect is a bit heavy, I'm just going to change the rendering to quarter so we can render faster and proceed faster with this video. Great, let's watch it again. That is nice. Now, I'm going to recompose these two layers and I'm gonna call it text displacement now it is time to give it a bit more depth so what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna copy this uh, layer two more times this is going to be our back this is going to be our middle and this is going to be our top and let's unsolo the other two layers and let's start with the back layer so what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna uh, make this back layer a bit more and um, I'm gonna just fade it a bit more so to do that I'm just gonna add the echo effect now what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna change the echo time to 0 0.3 and let's increase the number of copies to a number such as 50 and that is nice and now let's decrease the uh, intensity so this is good and let's decrease the decay to a number such as like 0.90 so that is nice now let's fix the edges by adding a gacha blur effect and now it is time to colorize it so we can use um, effects such as tint or fill but i'm just going to use the coloroma for this effect so let's just add the coloroma effect now if i go towards the output cycle I can choose for example the fire and smoke but as you see the color does not look exactly what we want so we can go to input phase and we can change the get phase from to, from the intensity to alpha channel so now we'll have something like this okay this is exactly not what we want but let's just leave it for now and I'm going to solo the middle layer I'm going to exactly repeat the same steps with different values so I'm just going to add the echo effect this time and I'm going to change this um, this time the echo time to minus 0, 0, 0, 0.005 the number of echoes to 50 and the decay to for example let's just decrease it a bit and then I'm gonna copy and get the Gaussian blur and the coloroma effect. However, this time I'm just gonna change the apple cycle to fire. And now let's watch. So now as you see, we are getting those fire edges that we want that represent the heat uh, letter. So that is good. And then I'm just gonna rebuild this original layer. Great. So some of the layers, as you see, we have some uh, gray spots in here, and that is because we are working on the quarter, not on the full resolution. But as soon as you turn this uh, effect from quarter to full, you will have the uh, 
uh, better picture quality but I'm not gonna for example now change it because um, this is already too heavy and I'm just gonna proceed further and I'm gonna pre-compose it and I'm gonna call it the final text now it is time to stylize our background so to do that what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna create a new background and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna add a gradient ramp effect and I'm just gonna set the colors to a dark color like this and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna go towards the project panel I'm gonna open the texture folder and I'm gonna bring the texture I'm gonna set its mode on overlay and then I'm gonna open some dot texture in here I'm gonna set this mode on screen and then I'm gonna add a curves effect and I'm gonna push it towards the dark channel so we have less dots and then I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and let's add a big noise to this design and then I'm gonna set an amount of noise for like 7% and lastly let's add a deep blow effect for our work and I'm gonna set it on 250 and let's turn down the exposure like this and let's just set it on half to see what we have done all right so here's the final result and i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed this all right so here's the final result and i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to leave out a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot to grow all right here we are at the end of this video and i hope you all right here's the final result and i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot for the future content. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Okay, this is exactly not what we want, but let's just leave it for now. And I'm going to solo the middle layer. I'm going to exactly repeat the same steps with different values. So I'm just going to add the echo effect this time. And I'm going to change this um, this time the echo time to minus 0, 0, 0, 0005, the number of echoes to 50, and the decay to, for example, let's just decrease it a bit. And then I'm gonna copy and get the Gaussian Blur and the Coloroma effect. However, this time I'm just gonna change the output cycle to fire. And now let's watch. So now as you see, we are getting those fire edges that we want that represent the heat uh, letter. So that is good. And then I'm just gonna rebuild this original layer. Great, so some of the layers as you see we have some uh, gray spots in here and that is because we are working on the quarter, not on the full resolution, but as soon as you turn this uh, effect from quarter to full, you will have the uh, better picture quality, but I'm not gonna, for example, now change it because um, this is already too heavy and I'm just gonna proceed further and I'm gonna pre-compose it and I'm gonna call it the final text. Now it is time to stylize our background. So to do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna create a new background and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna add a gradient ramp effect and I'm just gonna set the colors to a dark color like this and then what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to go towards the project panel I'm going to open the texture folder and I'm going to bring the texture I'm going to set its mode on overlay and then I'm going to open some dot texture in here I'm going to set this mode on screen and then I'm going to add a curves effect and I'm going to push it towards the dark channel so we have less dots and then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and let's add a big noise 
to this design and then I'm going to set in amount of noise for like 7% and lastly let's add a deep blue effect for our work and I'm going to set it on 250 and let's turn down the exposure like this and let's just set it on half to see what we have done all right here's the final result and i hope you have enjoyed this video if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a lot for the future content thank you so much goodbye